In last week's video, I showed you how to create Adobe Atmos with the help of Digital Performer version 11. Back then we did the basic setup. We had a 5.1 Adobe Atmos bed layout. We had three objects that we were able to move around. We had some issues with the timecode plugin, but we were able to resolve them in three different ways. And back then I said that I would do a second part of this video in order to show you how to use the 10.2 channel layout that Digital Performer provides in order to mimic a 7.1.2 Dolby Atmos bed layout. And this is what we're going to do today. So today, Digital Performer, Dolby Atmos, 7.1.2 beds with the help of 10.2 tracks in Digital Performer. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I'm a digital media educator with more than 30 years of experience in higher education. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Today about a hack that allows us to use 7.1.2 bed tracks in a digital performer Dolby Atmos project. If any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join our Discord community. Invert link is in the description below, or there's also a QR code here somewhere. And you can now also follow me on Instagram. Social links are below. As I said in the beginning, this is the second part of a two-part series. So if you have not seen the first part of this video, I strongly encourage you to watch the first. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, or there's also going to be a card that is going to pop up here somewhere. Without that information, a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today are not going to make a whole lot of sense. You might still get some information out of it, but it's still better if you watch that first video first. And with that being said, let's jump right into our project from last week. Now, once again, if you want to know how we arrived at that state, you need to watch last week's video. It is essentially a very simple project with four loops that come with the Elastic uh, Player from Ubershall. They're part of the demo bank. I like to use those loops uh, as I alluded last week because they are very liberal in their copyright so I can simply use them in these videos. And uh, I've set up a demo, a demo project for Adobe Atmos that essentially means I'm using the Adobe Atmos renderer here. I've routed the audio from Digital Performer into the Adobe Atmos renderer via the Adobe Audio Bridge. Uh, the first uh, six channels are routed with a 5.1 bed track. Uh, the pad, uh, this is the first track here, is going to be routed into that bed, and the bed then goes into the uh, the first six channels. And the remaining three tracks, a synth track, a key track, and the bass track are routed into objects. Uh, we have routed them here into objects uh, 13 through 18, uh, so essentially the three stereo pairs, six objects in total. And each of the uh, tracks essentially holds a music panner from Dolby uh, that will kind of communicate the panning information from the digital performer into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's have a brief listen of what we have here. So as you can see here, we have the six objects uh, and we have the bed, which uh, once again is a 5.1 bed. There's currently nothing in the LFE channel, but that's fine. And we ran it a little bit into an issue with the timecode. So what we have here is we have the timecode channel, a timecode track that just holds a rendered audio of the timecode information. And that was the easiest way to kind of work around the issues that we ran into with Digital Performer and the timecode plugin. Now, one of the more interesting things about Digital Performer is that Digital Performer does not limit us to 5.1 surround sound tracks. It actually has higher channel counts available for us. And one of those is 10.2. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change our bed track from a 5.1 layout to a 10.2 layout and then we're going to use that layout in order to communicate a 7.1.2 bed layout into the Adobe Atmos renderer. Now in order to do that the first thing I need to do is I need to change the output settings. So let's go into the bundles uh, in the, within the studio settings and here the main output uh, we're going to switch that for 5.1 to 10.2. This by the way is also the reason why I started numbering the objects at uh, number 13 uh, so that I I have enough channels available for me to actually switch that over to a 12 channel um, surround sound layout. We are not going to use channels 11 and 12. Those are actually going to become empty because otherwise the Dolby Atmos render would get confused a little. So we, are, we have to, we are going to have to kind of uh, move things around a little and kind of consolidate things a little. So we are, but we are going to use the 10.2 channel layout in order to get things going. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also do the same thing for the buses. I had this Atmos bed bus, which was a 5.1 bus. And I'm going to switch it over to a 10.2 as well. And uh, then I probably have to reconnect everything. So let me just go into the bed. The input here is supposed to be the uh, essentially Atmos bed bus. 
uh, and that should now essentially for the moment being at least uh, send the audio into the Dolby Atmos render. So let me just see if the audio is reconnected again. And indeed it is. Now you see that there's already audio coming in at channels 1 to 10, but this uh, audio obviously is not exactly in uh, the correct uh, channel layout. Um, it essentially follows the 10.2 layout that Digital Performer has. What we actually need to do is we need to convert it into 7.1.2. Now in order to do that, the first thing we need to figure out is how that 10.2 channel layout actually works. And uh, the interesting thing about that is that if you dig into the literature about that, you will actually find different opinions about how the 10.2 channel layout in Digital Performer works. Uh, it's, it's actually fairly interesting. At some point, I even read uh, somebody talking about that these are actually 14 channels, which I couldn't kind of follow. I think there are 12. I'm not completely sure. But there is some inconsistent information out there. Uh, what I decided to do is I decided to use uh, the obvious thing, read the manual and uh, kind of use the information that was provided to me by the manual. So what I want to do now first is I want to kind of free, simply compare the 7.1.2 Dolby Atmos layout with the 10.2 layout in Digital Performer so that we know which channels correspond to what channels uh, between the two layouts. So let's first have a look at the uh, Adobe Atmos 7.1.2 layout. And I kind of, I, I downloaded that kind of uh, schematic here. And essentially the idea is very, very simple and everybody who works with Adobe Atmos is already aware of that. We have the, the the two speakers in the front, the left speaker, the right speaker. We have a center speaker, we have a, an LFE. We have the two front overhead speakers, which are sort of located here at around 45 degrees, but they're kind of up about around 60 degrees. Then we have the... Uh, sides around and the rear around. That is sort of the uh, 7.1.2 channel layout that is available to us in Dolby Atmos. So let's compare that to the 10.2 channel layout that we have in Digital Performer. And what I did is I simply added the 10.2 channel layout uh, based on the information that I got from the manual to the schematics of the 7.1.2 Atmos layout. So let me just get that out of the way and let's kind of bring the 10.2 layout in. Now the 10.2 layout here is in red and as you can see there are some similarities but there are also some differences. Well first of all let's have a look at some of the channels that are identical. We do have a left channel obviously, we have a right channel, we have a center channel. We do have one uh, LFE channel that uh, sort of is the same but we have a second LFE channel. So 10.2 channel layout has two LFE channels, a left LFE channel, a right LFE channel. Interestingly um, the 10.2 layout also has two overhead speakers. Uh, they are are also located 45 degrees, but now they are not as high, so they are, they are not as close to the listener, they're a little further away. Uh, these are these two uh, speakers here in, uh, in kind of the, the circles here. Then we have uh, the side surround speakers, which are a little bit to the front. Um, and then the rear surround speakers, the same way, are a little bit kind of more towards the front. And then in addition to that, we also have a rear center speaker. So that means that many of the uh, uh, speaker positions are fairly similar to where they are in a 7.1.2 layout. And this allows us to simply remap the 10.2 layout into uh, the 7.1.2 layout that we need for Adobe Atmos bed in 7.1.2. Now, in order to better understand how that remapping works, let me just kind of get that out of the way and let's bring in kind of this uh, final graphics. Uh, so essentially, the uh, we're going to leave the uh, left and right speaker and the center speaker alone. We're going to uh, map, or we're going to fold the second LFE channel into the first LFE channel. So we're kind of, kind of mapping them, we're folding them together. The uh, two front, um, Hate speakers are going to stay the same, so essentially going to use the front hate speakers as front hate speakers in the Dolby Atmos setup. The same goes for the surround sound, the side surrounds and the rear surrounds. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to do something with the rear center speaker. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply fold that into the two rear surround speakers. So in, in essence, uh, it's actually very straightforward to convert 10.2 into 7.1.2. However, be aware that when we do that conversion, the listener position actually moves. So in the 10.2 layout, the listener is slightly further back than it is than the listener is in the 7.1.2 layout. So when we're doing the um, essentially the, 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 the panning of our sound sources within the Atmos bed, we need to be aware that, uh, you know, kind of the panner in digital performer actually kind of um, indicates a different position to what we're actually getting in uh, the, the actual Dolby Atmos rendering.
So let's see how that works in practice. Now, fortunately, that is very easy to do. All we really need is a plugin that can remap the channel layout from one channel layout to another channel layout within a 10.2 track in Digital Performer. And one such plugin is the M Channel Matrix plugin from Melda Production, which best of all is actually free. So let's use that. Now we need to apply that to our Adobe Atmos Bad Aux track here. That is sort of where we can uh, remap channels in our 10.2 output to the Adobe Atmos Bad. So let's go into the mixing board and in the mixing board, Board, we're going to add an instance of M channel matrix uh, to our um, Atmos bed aux track. So select, let's select that. Now, when it comes up first, uh, it uh, wants to be a stereo plugin. So we first need to tell it that uh, we actually have more than two channels. And this can be done by going into the toolbar settings. And uh, what we need to do is we just need a kind of a setting that has at least 12 channels. And one thing that we can do here is, unfortunately, surround sound doesn't really give us enough. So with, if you select surround sound, you can only go up to 10 channels, I believe. Uh, essentially up to eight channels, sorry. But if we select Ambisonics, we can actually go up to 64 channels. We need 12, so that is more than enough. So we're going to select Ambisonics here. And then we need to go in one more time and change the Ambisonics settings because we are not happy with just four channels according to an ambisonics first order setup uh, we actually want to have at least 12 so if we select uh, third order ambisonics we get a total of 16 channels and that is enough now the, the, the plugin has recognized that there is a maximum of 12 channels on this track so uh, it's going to kind of show us that we have 12 input channels we have 12 output channels and the last thing we really need to do is we just need to remap those uh, in order to kind of send the 10.2 uh, or the, the channels that are coming from the 10.2 layout in digital performer into the correct um spots uh, in the 7.1.2 Dolby Atmos bed layout. Now I've already created a preset here, so let's just open that up. Um, I called it Digital Performer 11, and that sort of shows you how that actually works. So essentially here we have the inputs, uh, and these are the outputs. So uh, left, right, center, are they stay where they are. Then we have the two LFEs. These are sort of uh, mapped together, so they are kind of coming in at uh, channel 4 and 5. So our left LFE, right LFE, we're going to simply kind of fold them together in order to get our LFE channel in the 7.1.2 layout. Then we need to kind of change things a little because the ordering is, is kind of uh, off. Uh, so we, we nine goes into uh, number five, uh, channel number 10 goes into number six uh, and, and so forth. And then we need to do something with the rear channel that comes in at um, number eight. Uh, and what I've done here is I've simply split that up. So kind of half of that information. So um, if you reduce it by 6 dB, essentially the loudness essentially is halved. So it's essentially it's, it's half as loud. So, so what I'm doing is I'm simply reducing the 6 dB uh, and kind of sending it into the two rear surround speakers so that uh, they sort of take care of that, that rear center speaker. And as you can see, essentially uh, channels 11 and 12 are empty because there is nothing going on, which is uh, expected because 11 and 12 would already be spots that should be occupied by objects in the Dolby Atmos renderer. And that's really everything that we need to do here. Uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to change the uh, settings in the panner because the surround panner doesn't really work particularly well. So let's go into the panner settings. And what I want actually is I want the arc panner. Uh, let's select that. And that gives us this, uh, this new banner that, that allows us to kind of move things around. And with that, everything should already work as expected. So let's see if we're getting a 7.1.2 surround uh, bed track. So let's see. Oh, it's a little, I need to reduce the, I, mean, I need to reduce the gain a little. So, so let's see. And as you can see, we now have the, 7.1.2 uh, bad track. So if we, if we move that around, so so this sort of, if you have it at the back, sort of it is it is uh, folded into the two rear speakers. So now we have the sides around and the rear surrounds. If we put it to the front. We have left speaker, right speaker, center speaker. I'm currently not sending anything into the LFE, but it sort of works in exactly the same way.
Yeah. In case you're wondering how I figured out what channel in the 10.2 layout goes into what channel into 7.1.2 layout, uh, this is actually fairly straightforward to do. If you go into, if you look at the panning, uh, if, you, if you look at the panner here in digital performance, this is actually a little small, which is a bit annoying, but sort of it has this little notches here. So what you can actually do is you can uh, move the uh, position into one of those notches and then essentially this will um, kind of send the information clear, clean into that particular speaker. So right now I have that kind of moved into the rear center speaker. So if I'm not playing the audio, I should actually kind of get that at the rear location. So if I'm moving that around, so let me just kind of move that, for example, into the the rear left speaker, you can essentially see I have the rear left speaker. And what I essentially did is I just kind of moved around and kind of made sure that each of the speakers is exactly where it is supposed to be. So as you can see, this is actually very straightforward to do. Now, I'm not completely sure if there are many people out there actually using the 10.2 channel layout in Digital Performer, but if you do, you can convert it into Dolby Atmos into a 7.1.2 track very easily. Not particularly complicated to do, and it opens up completely new possibilities because uh, you now have everything you need for Dolby Atmos in Digital Performer, uh, everything including a 7.1.2 bed, or at least the possibility to create a 7.1.2 bed. Once again, be aware that the listener position is slightly different, so kind of what you do in the panner in Digital Performer might not reflect one-to-one -to, -one to what's actually happening in Dolby Atmos, but I think that's fairly straightforward to figure out essentially how you would actually kind of fine-tune the positioning of your audio so that it actually works in Dolby Atmos, so this should actually be very straightforward to do. Now this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching my videos, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.